played long ball in the Valley of the Sun. Four home runs led the way to a Cactus League win over the Padres. Today it's all about the pitching as the Ace is back on the mound in a showdown with Oakland. Stay tuned as Bumgarner and the Giants take on the A's at Scottsdale Stadium next. Afternoon exhibition baseball here in the desert as we come to you from Scottsdale Stadium. It is the Bay Area rivalry A's and Giants. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, this is a day where, look, both teams are still trying to fill out their rosters. But I think the big story, Mike, has to be Madison Bumgarner, who was on the shelf for a little while. He's back today. Well, yeah, six days ago, uh, he was dealing with two injuries. One, a nerve problem in his foot, and then another one, some inflammation in his ribcage. And they said he might miss two starts. Well, everybody in the Giants world was up in arms, understandably. He is the opening day guy. He is the horse. And uh, today, we're going to see just how good he feels. He's going to be out there today, and ideally, Dave Rigetti would like to get him up and down about four times, so four innings if they're easy, and maybe even a fifth. We'll see. Giants do have some of their regulars in the lineup today, and Trevor Brown is going to do the catching instead of Buster Posey. When we come back on this beautiful afternoon here in Scottsdale, we'll have the lineups and the very first pitch right after this. Gorgeous day. Amy G is here. Amy, what's up? Gentlemen, you're well aware of the Giants notched 15 runs last night, and that was with the pitcher hitting eighth. Now, they can't do it today, of course. It's an interleague game against the A's, but you might see Bruce Bochy using the pitcher in that eighth hole a lot more during the 2016 regular season. He said he wasn't always a fan, but it's a strategy he wants to explore, and the combo of Span and Pagan simply makes too much sense. Speedy guys, Dwayne. All right, is Bumgarner about ready to face Billy Burns? As this game is just seconds away from the first pitch. And here it is to Burns, and he takes a fastball high. So we get started a minute early at 1 
04. And Burns fouls it to the backstop. Burns is hitting it 435, so that gives you an idea that he's off to a great start this spring. He's got three runs batted in. He also is the young man that hit the line drive off of Johnny Cueto's forehead. That wasn't very nice. Burns is a switch hitter. And he pops this one foul and out of play. For Bumgarner, I mean, he's going to give you four different looks. Fastball, it'll be low 90s. That last fastball at 90. He's got a natural cut to it that will run into a right-hander, and he'll enhance that cut. He also has a slider and a curveball and an occasional changeup. And he waits on this and fouls it off the backstop. He's running that fastball nicely in on the hands of Billy Burns. Bumgarner's 26 years old, but he's in his sixth year at the big league level. Seems like he's been around a long time and definitely has accomplished a lot in his first five and a half years. And the breaking ball hits Burns. So you just saw Burns. Here's the rest of the lineup for the A's. Marcus Simeon is going to hit second, followed by Jed Lowry. Chris Davis, the cleanup hitter, then it's Billy Butler, Josh Fegley, and Yonder Alonzo. Josh Smolinski is going to hit in the A slot, and Matt Chapman will hit ninth. This is a split squad game for the Oakland A's. They are playing also in Mesa at home. And Simeon checks his swing, and he goes around, and it's 0 and 1. Simeon hitting 250 with a run batted in the spring. With Jed Lowry on deck. The A's are six, seven, and three on the spring. As this is driven to right, Pence has got a beat on this one. Now in front of the wall, he makes the catch. Burns is going to tag, and he'll end up at second base. Uh, as you can tell, judging by that fly ball, there is carry in this ballpark. It favors the hitter today. Let's take a look at Madison Bumgarner's numbers. In two starts of spring training, five innings pitched, six hits allowed, no walks, five strikeouts. Uh, a little bit of, of drama coming into this start simply because he missed his last start with uh, some nerve problems in his left foot, his push-off foot, and some uh, inflammation in the right side of his chest in the rib cage. Breaking ball to Lowry is a call strike. They originally thought that uh, Bumgarner may miss two starts, but he'll have none of that. So we are watching him closely. Ideally, he wants to go, you know, four innings, maybe more, depending on how it goes. Nothing in two. Pitch count's important, but what Dave Rigetti, the Giants pitching coach, likes to stress is getting up and sitting down and getting back up and sitting down. And basically, that's throw an inning, go back, sit down, cool off, restart. That's how he that's what he feels is the most important part driven to left Pagan on the move and it's going to sail over his head and it bounces over the wall. It'll be a double for Lowry Burns scores. It's one nothing. Let's take a look at that defense playing behind Madison Bumgarner starting the Giants outfield from left to right. It'll be Pagan, Span, and Pence. And I'd like to be the opening day lineup in the outfield for the Giants. In the infield, from the on the left side, it'll be Green and Tomlinson. On the right side, it'll be Panic and Adrianza. Trevor Brown, he'll be in the squad, putting down the signs. So here's Chris Davis, the former Brewer. Hitting at 182 with four runs batted in. Lots of power, lots of strikeouts, but talented. Well, yeah, indeed. 27 home runs last year. Product out of Cal State Fullerton. And that's hooked foul. He does not lack for bat speed. And he will strike out. I mean, last year in 392 at bats, he had 122 strikeouts. But when he connects, I mean, there's damage. Panic trying to keep Lowry close at second. Blocked by Brown. Two balls and a strike. Yeah. 
hard breaking ball there. Giants won last night 15 to 6. The A's lost 10 to 8. They lost to the Cleveland Indians. They're strike three ball. Home guard early on showing no ill effects from the ribcage pain that he had six days ago or with the foot problem that he had on his on his left foot. This is a nice fastball knee high cutting in on the outside corner. Leaves Chris Davis up there standing. With nothing but a paddle. Here's Billy Butler. I think this is an interesting matchup. Bumgarner style of pitching with that good hard fastball that cuts in the right hand hitter and Billy Butler one of the quickest guys in the league inside. Good middle in hitter. And strength on strength here. The men in blue today it'll be Mike Everett behind the dish. Brian Gorman Mike DeMiro Jim Wolf they'll be on the bases. Everett will stay behind the plate the other. Three umpires, they will rotate every two innings. Normally, Mike Everett's a pretty good pitcher to, or umpire to throw to. He's got a wide strike zone, especially if you're a left handed pitcher and you're pitching on the outside corner to right handers. Likes the ball low. Tomlinson charging, and that'll end the inning. So, the A's pick up a run against Bumgarner, and now the Giants are coming up. Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the all new Double Jack Burger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota. Save big during Toyota's One for Everyone sales event. Find the right Toyota for you at buyatoyota.com. Here in Scottsdale, the A's are the 1 0 lead. Let's take a look at Bruce Bochy's lineup. It'll be Denard Spann in the leadoff spot, followed by Joe Panic and then Angel Pagan. Hunter Pence, the cleaner pitter, Tomlinson fifth, Trevor Brown in the sixth slot, then is Grant Green seventh, Blanco eighth, and Avery Adrianza hitting ninth. On the hill today for the Oakland Athletics will be Felix Dubron. That's what he does in three starts. He's having a nice spring, nine strikeouts against one walk and in eight innings, and that's significant because he's always had a high walk total. That has always been the big if with Dubron. Brunt in his fifth year at the big league level. He's 28 years of age. Started off his career with the Red Sox, then he went to the Cubs last year with the Blue Jays and wound up in Oakland. Span a good ball game last night, hit a home run. Also picked up a couple of other hits. Back in the lineup this afternoon. Day game after a night game. In tight. 
Two balls and one strike. And you're going to see a lot of fastballs from Dubron. I mean, he likes it, and he'll four seam and two seam. And lots of movement. Velocity mid to low to mid 90s. More lows than mids. Oh, over the Giants dugout. This was the home run last night. Kind of a laser shot right down the line in right field. Yeah, he's definitely put together a swing. And, uh, I think that at bat was a good bat. Obviously, a home run probably would have been a double at AT&T, but his other at bat when he went the opposite way to left center off a breaking ball for a triple, that was more impressive. Foul again. Look out. Almost swing the guy with his back to us. Well, Gamer Babe got it. Nice. Not everybody totally celebrating. Well, I can't believe it found its way to her because the big fella next to her got her covered. Big hop. And Alonzo stays with it. Let's take a look at the Oakland Athletic defense starting in their outfield from left to right. It'll be Davis, Burns, and Smolinski. Simeon and Chapman on the left side. Lowry and Alonzo on the right side. And Josh Figley, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. So here's Panic. Panic with a good swing going right now. Started out slow, but then he got hot and he has stayed hot. And to strike with Angel Pagan on deck. Sellout crowd here this afternoon. Sellout last night. And another strike to make it one and two. Hard to find a place to sit down on the berms in the outfield. Pulled on the ground. Alonzo charging. He'll circuit to the bag. Two outs. And here's Pagan. Pagan right at 500 on the spring. That works out to an 8 for 16. Switch hitter. Batting right handed and he takes a call strike. And that's fouled on the right field line and out of play. Giants have played 18 games and there's 16 games left on the schedule before they will travel to Milwaukee and play on April 4th. So just a little over halfway when it comes to getting through the exhibition season. This is off the end of the bat and it's right at Lowry and that's going to end the inning. So three ground balls. Giants are retired. A's are coming up and they lead one nothing.
nothing lead as we head to the second. And for Oakland, it'll be Josh Fagley who's going to lead things off. They see Madison Bumgarner who hit a batter and then Lowry knocked in Burns for the only run on the game is Fegley takes the ball one ball and no strikes. This is hit sharply on the ground. Tomlinson wrestles it down throws in the dirt and they got him. All right let's check in with Amy G. Amy. Buster just realized we're, we are right behind first base. Yeah, we're, but we got lots of people to protect you. Um, thanks for joining us. It's a little cooler under here than it is up on the railing. Let's talk about the uh, offensive production from that lineup last night. Fans got to see what quite possibly is an opening day lineup, and you guys racked up 15 runs. Uh, you said last night there really aren't any holes. How impressed are you with what you guys were able to do? Yeah, it's it's an exciting lineup. I mean, the, uh, you look one through eight, and then if Kane swings the bat like he did last night, one through nine, um, you got the ability to really grind on some pitchers, I think, and have some guys that can drive the ball in the gap or drive the ball out of the ballpark. And uh, I just think it, it has the potential to be a dynamic lineup. Kane was super impressive at the plate. But I know the storyline was really what he was doing on the mound. And you, you had some pretty impactful words last night about what you saw. Will you, will you uh, recap that for us, what you thought about his performance? Yeah, well, I mean, I've worked with him for, for quite a while now. And uh, just what I've seen in the bullpen, what I saw before the game, the, his pitches were very crisp. And uh, I know fastball command probably wasn't what he wanted it to be. But just the way the breaking ball was breaking, the ball it had good bite on it, downward action, the changeup. Um, was hit or miss, but still showed signs of being um, a pitch that, that I saw some strikeout pitches, which I think um, haven't seen in a while, so I'm excited for him. You also talked about how important Matt Cain is to this team, and, and will you reiterate that? Well, I mean, the, he's been here. He's the longest tenured giant. Um, he's kind of uh, a guy. When I got here, I looked to um, just a professional and um, I think he still sets an example for the younger players when they come up. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be really important for us to, uh, to have a, a Matt Cain going out there every five days and, and uh, giving us some good innings. All right. We all know that there's some, uh, there's some groups on this team that are pretty tight. And uh, it's, you know, it's no secret. You and Madison Baumgartner are kind of BFFs a little bit. <laughs> and this is from Dwayne. I'm, I'm throwing Dwayne under the bus. He wants to know if you're jealous. That Trevor is catching Madison today. Well, it's March. What are we? Nineteenth, twentieth. So no, I'm not jealous at this point. Um, another two or three weeks. Yes, I would be jealous. But right now, I'm okay with it. In all seriousness, your thoughts on Trevor Brown and and your role with him? Are you, do you see yourself as a, as a mentor? Do you reach out to him? Do you see things that he's doing? He, he's been so impressive. Trevor's confident. Um, I think when he came up last year, he caught a lot of games and uh, handled a staff pretty well that, that he had never, you know, didn't have any experience with. And, uh, yeah, I mean, any way I can help him, I can. I think um, he's got a good idea of what he's doing um, but is, is still open to learn and, and take some constructive criticism here and there and uh, – should be some 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 good stuff going forward for him. It's an exciting time, Buster. Thank you for joining us, Dwayne and Mike. Let's get up to you. All right, thanks, Buster, and thanks, Amy. I knew he had a, a jealous bone in his body. Well, he doesn't want anybody handling Madison Bumgarner. Come on, I mean, he's being very political in his answer. Get on the ground, Tomlinson on the backhand. Two outs. But, you know, pitchers are that way, too. I mean, once you get into a rhythm with a, with a catcher, I mean, you you want to you want to keep that thing going. And it also will get you through the rough spots on days when you go out there and you can't find a rhythm. Your catcher who knows you, knows the rhythms that you like, he can get you back into it quicker than other catchers can. And if you're uh, uh, the second catch on a team, you need to figure those out. And if the first catcher is willing to open up and tell you those things, then I mean, guess what? You got a good combination, a one-two punch. So important for young catchers to gain the confidence of a pitching staff. Burns, a little pop-up 
that Andrianza is going to give chase, but he is going to come up short as that ball landed in the first row. So it's one ball and one strike. Giants have Andrew Susak, who, like Brown, I mean, he very early on in his career captured the, the confidence of the staff. Right now, Susak is nursing a, a wrist injury, and which is a significant injury because it really sidelined him a lot last year. Look out. Pay attention. Heads up. Gentlemen, he was a gentleman, brought his glove, and hopefully he knocked it down. Well, I think he's using it for a seat cushion because she needed a little help. Man. She says, I caught him with a bare hand. Not a problem. Hmm. Hooked foul down the left field line. I think that's the first time she's got a foul ball. Looks like a player. At a bid. One and two. Got him. And that'll end the inning. Hayes pick up a single run. And Hunter Pence will lead things up. Giants hit four home runs. That's Crawford, the first one, first inning, gone. Then it's Denard Span off of Maurer in the second, gone. Buster Posey goes the opposite way off of Maurer, gone. And then Hunter Pence, he does the same thing. This one off of Drew Pomerez. That's right, you got it, gone. Gone. Boog Shambi, was that him that just come, came by? Yeah, Boog Shambi. Boog. Good man, Boog. Good broadcaster. Here's the pitch to Pence, and Pence with a big swing. You saw Pence's home run last night. He's got two on the spring, hitting 462. Well, he's Very high. He's pretty excited to be back on the field. Missed a lot of time last year, fought through a number of injuries. The worst one was a broken wrist that he sustained early on in spring. He never really was the same. So Pence waves at a pitch in the dirt, and he's retired. Well, check out the new four-pack options. The opening day pack guarantees you a ticket to the home opener against the Dodgers, plus three other games starting at 199. And the Red Sox pack, which includes interleague games versus the Blue Jays, Orioles, and, of course, the Red Sox starting at $99. Go to sfgiants.com slash minipack for more information on how to purchase. Here's Kelby Tomlinson. 
Tomlinson offers at the first pitch and hits it into the parking lot and it's no balls in one strike. You watch DeBron's motion it is step back is very very small. It's almost like he's thrown out of stretch. Curveball hit on the ground towards the hole. Chapman on the dive and the throw. And he throws out the speedy Tomlinson two down. That's big league play right there. With the speed that Tomlinson can put on a ground ball, especially the left side of the infield, if you get a, an infielder to leave his feet, more often than not, Tomlinson's going to beat it out. And I think that's what is the highlight of this play is how quickly Chapman was able to get to the throwing position after going down on his belly to make a catch. Nice play. So here's Trevor Brown. Brown having a very nice spring, hitting red at 400. He's got seven runs batted in. And a breaking ball for a call strike. Foul out of play over the stadium. Eight hits and 20 at bats for Brown. And he's had a lot of two out singles for RBIs, Just which is the big statement at bat that players can have, especially when one's trying to make a club. Low and away, two and two. The minor league season ended last year for Brown and he went home. Follow the Giants on TV, radio, and then he got a call. Tap foul. So it went from couch to catching PV. How about that? Yeah. Off the grid to on the team. And he was so impressive in his stint. When he was called up, that uh, they really gave him some opportunity here in in his first big league camp, and he's really taking advantage of it. Look out! And that gets to Brunt on the leg, and he goes down. Uh, Hit him right, maybe on the back of the knee or the knee. Ouch! God, I hate to see that. Yeah. I mean, that was a direct hit, and that ball reversed its course, and it was hit very sharply. It looked like in the back, Mike. Yeah, it did. I don't know. Look, I don't know what's better, front or back. But well, you got a little meat on the back. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. I mean, that's the only advantage. I mean, Otherwise, you hit that kneecap in that. Uh. Uh, immediately, people start moving around in the A's bullpen, as you would expect. So, DeBronx is up. Watch it again. One more look. Plants then rotates around. Gets him. Looks like it just inside his right knee. Nick Paparesta, the A's head trainer, out there very quickly. He knew that was a direct hit. Just a stinger, and that will light up. I mean, that'll be there for a bruise of some sort. It'll be there for the next month. Yeah, probably Mike if if he does stay in. Yeah, you get the out, you go sit down, and that's when it really starts to tighten up is when you, you're not moving around. There's no reason for him to continue. Because I guarantee he's going to be thinking about that, and he's not going to be thinking about the glove or the guy in the batter's box the rest of the way. You're pitching around the pain you have there, and it's stinging. And you're right. He gets back to the dugout and sits down and tries to get going again. So really, what is he going to accomplish here with two outs? I mean, he's got adrenaline pumping through that thing right now, but reality is going to set in soon, and it's going to be barking.
foot. Remember, it, it is the manly thing to do. Yeah, it is a split squad, and uh, Bob Melvin is not here. The acting manager is Mark Kotze. So here's Grant Green with two outs and Brown at first. So Cueto gets dinged the other night, and Dubrunt gets dinged here this afternoon. There's a pitch high and away, one ball and no strikes. Hit the left field. So with two outs, it'll be Gregor Blanco, the designated hitter. Suffering with some back spasms has not had really a chance to play a whole lot. Jumps back out of the way. One ball and no strikes. Pops it up. This will be playable. And that'll end the inning. After two, two nothing, Oakland. On CSN Bay Area is brought to you by AAA. Get an insurance quote from AAA by March 31st, and you'll get a free carry-all tote. Restrictions apply. Go to AAA branch for details. He's on top 2 nothing Here in the third inning, Bumgarner back out as he'll face Marcus Simeon, who takes a pitch down low. One ball and no strikes. Simeon, Lowry, Davis... Here in the third. Tom Garner, no walks, a couple of strikeouts, and he did hit a better. He hit Burns to open up the game. There's a strike. Let's check in with Amy G. She's got a guest. All right, gentlemen, Brandon Crawford joining us. Thank you. Um, what goes through Brandon Crawford's mind driving home 
after the Giants notch 15 runs with what very likely is going to be your opening day lineup? Uh, it's a good feeling, especially against a, a team that we're going to be playing a lot this year um, with the Padres. And um, I think a guy that's that's supposed to be in the rotation or at least battling for a, a rotation spot. Um, I mean, it, it's a pretty good feeling, especially um, everybody contributing from top to bottom. How, how true is it, this theory of contagious in baseball? It seems like pitchers feed off of good outings from another pitcher. Do you feed off of good hitting? Uh, it seems like it happens. I don't know how, but um, maybe it's just a confidence thing. Um, if you see a couple guys start to hit, then you're like, okay, maybe I can hit this guy too. Um, and you just kind of build off that all the way down. Ball seems to get much, much bigger. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about becoming a dad for the third time. But you're the dad of a little boy. Now, you haven't had a whole lot of time to do some compare, comparing, but is it different having a son with your two little girls running around? Changing diapers is different. That's that's really anatomy is different. Yes, <laughs> the biggest difference so far. Um, I'm sure once he gets a little bit older and gets a personality and stuff, I'll be able to, to tell you a little bit more. But um, but it's just busy. Um, I mean, having three under three three and under, um, it, it keeps keeps us busy at home. You win with busiest person on the team, no doubt. And all I've heard about parents, because I have two, now you have three, is you go from playing man-on-man -man to zone. So, you, I mean, Jalen's a pretty good athlete, so you're probably going to do fine, huh? We've done all right so far, yeah. We've had help most of the spring also, which um, which is nice. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it, we, we have our hands full at home, really. There's no breaks. Um, I mean, Jalen thinks coming here is a break. So, um, I mean, I think it's work still, but um, but it's, it's different work for sure. Well, it is work indeed. And, and on March 19th, where is it? When you come in, you know, when you report, where did you think you wanted to be by March 19th for your goals, your milestones of what you use spring training for? And, and are you where you want to be? Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I came in the spring with a little shoulder soreness. My shoulder feels feels better now um and then um i wanted to be on time with um uh, at the plate also with on pitches so um that's that's coming together better this past week also um i think getting out there and kind of getting into the rhythm of the game and playing shortstop helps the at bats somehow also because dh in the first week is is tough you kind of get out of rhythm you your timing's not quite there and i think that's big um that's a big thing at the plate how nice was it to get to work with Joe Panic again? Did you guys just kind of pick up where you left off? Yeah, I mean, we do early work and stuff together and, and take ground balls during batting practice, even if we're not playing together that day. So um, we've gotten a good amount of work um, together, and um, I think we've had two games now. Um, and I think we've turned at least one double play. So, um, so yeah, I kind of pick up where you left off, I guess. And it's just good to see him back. And, and be healthy because he just looks like he's having the time of his life right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he looks good. He, he's said that he feels healthy and um, and he's hitting well, um, like always, normal Joe. So, um, so yeah, it's good to have him back out there. All right, last one. Is your oldest daughter jealous of your hair? And what are the plans with your hair? It, it's getting very long. I'm not going to ask you about product and all that. Just what are the plans with the do? I don't think she's jealous. She has she has good hair. Um, you don't know girls very well, then. <laughs> We're all jealous. I actually think um, Jade and the second daughter got my hair. Um, Braylon's is more like uh, Jalen's, which is perfectly fine, also. But um, you're scoring points <laughs> left and right at home right now. Um, the, I need a little trim. It's it's a little long, so we'll see. Sometime uh, during this month, I'll probably figure out a day where I can get a little trim. That's breaking news. Brandon Crawford, thank you. Guys? I wonder what a little trim means. What, a quarter of an inch? Well, he could go two inches and be fine. And no that would problem. be a little trim? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Amy was about ready to get into the product. I mean, I, I was, you know, was, hanging on every word there. I was there. about ready to go online and start ordering some stuff. Yeah. Something that makes our hair grow better. Or turn it another color. <laughs> There's a strike two. Chris Davis one out Simeon at second by way of a single and a wild pitch Lowry a strikeout victim with Billy Butler on deck two nothing A's here in the third 
Get on the ground and a base hit. And here comes Simeon. And Pagan's throw is going to be late. And he missed the cutoff man and into second base goes Davis. Well, it's not a throw you want to make in the regular season simply because you lost the force and you allow that back runner to get to second base now in scoring position. But I think he's just airing it out, having some fun. Uncutoffable, which is a new word that we're using. A cutoffable throw, an uncutoffable throw. It works. Yeah, we're working. We're going. We're running with it. Here's Butler. Butler bounced out to short to end the first inning. Three nothing, Oakland. How do you find time to get a, a little trimmed off when you got three under three at home? Do it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Get the scissors and just jump in front of the mirror. High and deep to left. Pagan back. And gone. So Butler with a two run home run. On a 1 1 pitch, and it's now 5 to nothing as Dave Rigetti comes out. You know, we talked about the strength on strength with the high fastball that cuts in on the hands of right handed hitters for Bumgarner and the quickness middle in for Billy Butler. And uh, this time he gets what he's looking for and jumps all over it. They set that target way in and it leaks out just a little bit elevation on contact and Butler knew it when he left the batter's box. And so the Bumgarner. So Dave Rigetti trots out with his 30 second message. And basically says get your work in stay. Stay the course. Concentrate on the target get the ball down. I mean, it's something you hear a thousand times in your career, but you, uh, you got to keep hearing it. So it'll be pitch number 51 for Bumgarner. And it's hit high and foul. Billy Butler from the side, very compact swing with lots of power, and he's always been a good high ball mistake hitter, and that was a high ball mistake. It's a humble trot. One ball and one strike. Oh, you watch Bumgarner. I mean, it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say about his start after the game. But he doesn't look to me like he's throwing around any pain. Remember, he had that neuroma on his left foot, which is a little nerve inflammation. He gave him a cortisone shot for that. I, I mean, he's getting good drive off the back leg, so I don't think that's an issue. He had some inflammation on the right side of his rib cage just below the sternum. And it doesn't look to me like he's throwing around it. It's a normal arm slot. He's been consistent with the arm slot. It's been a little upright with his follow through and not as the normal bend that he has when he delivers his pitch. But that's something you see all around in spring training. I do believe that's kind of the reason why he's had a lot of pitches up more than we normally see. So full count to Figley. Got him. Looking for a knuckleball. Here's Alonzo. Alonzo singled in the second. And he takes high and in. One ball and no strikes. The bullpen for the Giants looks like it's 
empty of anybody throwing. No, well, that's not true. I see a catcher swing and a miss. It's hard to see if anybody's throwing because with an ad out there is covering up where the pitcher would be standing. Visit Arizona.com is keeping me from knowing who's throwing. <laughs> well, I think they're kind of inching their way back to the to the mound. There we go. To see, yeah, at least there is indeed somebody throwing. Who it is, but we don't know. In in order to find out, you have to visit Arizona.com. <laughs> that looks like Vin Mazzaro. Yep, there's the bullpen for the Giants. I can find about four other spots that would be better than that spot. Yeah, that's a bad spot. And there's a base hit to right field. Hitters will let you know if things just aren't going right. Well, that's going to be it for Bumgarner. They're going to bring in Mazzaro now as Bochy makes his way out to the to the mound. But again, I, I do want to emphasize, I didn't see him throwing uncomfortably. No. Well, we'll find out. His bum garner departs, so will we. It's 5 nothing, and we'll be back. For the A's here in the third, it's 5 nothing. is Vin Mazzaro. The right-hander is a new pitcher. For Marcotze. And this is bounced to third for Green. And on one pitch, Mazzaro is going to get the Giants into the dugout. Giants are coming up. It's 5 nothing. Oakland. What's the most award?
Monday, April 18th, it's Bear Unite Night with the Warriors, presented by Pete's Coffee, your special event. Package is going to include a ticket to see the Giants take on the D-backs and a co-branded Giants Warriors hat. Join us at at and Park as we send off the Warriors to another title run. In order to receive the cat hat, you need a special event ticket. 415-972-2298 or visit sfgiants.com special events. Dubrant still on the mound as he's facing Ari Adrianza. 5-0 Oakland. Change up. And nothing in two. Hydrate. Oh, NBA champs, of course. And hydrate. Yeah, and hydrate. One ball and two strikes. Adrianza. 294 with four runs batted in. He's had a nice spring. Much bigger, at least up on top. As he flips this one into center field, and it's going to fall in front of Billy Burns for a base hit. John Miller's going to come in, innings four, five, and six. There's the big kahuna. I'll head over to the KMBR side, and I'll be back in the center. So welcome back, John. Hey, he just interrupted his radio broadcast to flash us that big smile. So that's the first time John's actually been in front of a camera. Have you noticed that? I, I think he's handling it quite well. Here's Span, Denard Span, who bounced out to first. And John Miller, you know, he's fun to work with anyway because he is so relaxed and so loose. But when he gets down here for spring training, you know, he goes to a another level of loose. Yeah, he, he unbuttons another button. Yeah, and uh, he'll bring the fans that are sitting right below us into the broadcast. He'll bring me into the booth. It's yeah, not a problem. A joy to work with. Two balls and no strikes. Panic to follow. 5 nothing Oakland. Third inning. Span bounces it off his foot. You see our broadcast booths are in a different spot than normally where if a gentleman stands up in front of us, we can't see the field. That's how close... And a number of times, a couple of gamer babes have been trying to get through the window after Mike, but we've had to stop them. <laughs> that's right. And that's yeah. how close we are. Frontal assault right through the window. <laughs> yeah, one of them, Joe Fonzie's mom. Who was here today? Yeah, she tried to get in through the window. Total gamer babe. Had a chance to spend some time with her. I mean, knowing Joe Fonzie for all these years, we, we never met his mother and his brother. Span takes a strike. It's two and two. I mean, you can even hand the camera right through the window. Of which they are doing right now. Hey, it's spring training. Hey, you can't do that in other parts. You unbutton another level of loose. Look out. That's, up. That's chin music. Well, I, I don't think that was intentional. That's just Felix Dubron. I mean, he, he can throw one under your chin at, in any given time. He's not it. He's spooky. And he throws hard, and his, his, yeah. his ball is heavy. But I am impressed that he's gone back out there after getting drilled in the back of his leg by a line drive off the bat of Trevor Brown. And the walk. And in the middle of that pitch, the misters went on. The misters here at the ballpark. See them just about around every ballpark here in the Valley of the Sun. 
And it's going to be upwards around 90 degrees today. If you're sitting in the sun, these misters help. I don't know who came up with that idea. It just seems so obvious why they haven't done that for like 100 years, but they work. I think somebody watching a game at Candlestick on a Friday night in July came up with the idea. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The problem with that is it turns the snow by the time it hits the <laughs> ground. Here's Panic. Joe Panic bounced out to first in the first. The yeah, you see through the misters. And they do help the broadcasters too. Well, plus that's the way it looked at Candlestick a lot of nights. Very fog like. You're wondering what pitchers do after they maybe struggle a little bit in spring training. That's what they do right there. Well, they wanted to, him to get up four times and go out and basically throw four innings. So this is what they're accomplishing right now. So the very fact that he's getting up there and he's going to finish his fourth inning, so to speak, but do it in the bullpen, tells you that he is not hurting from his injuries. Physically fine. Two and one to panic. Two and two right at the knees. I'm going out there in the bullpen under the watchful eye of Mark Gardner. He's really one of the best mechanics in all the game. If mechanically you're out of whack, Mark Gardner can really work wonders with you, getting you back in. Well, we're getting the same way, but they're a tremendous one two punch. Giants pitching coaches. And Panic waves at a pitch in the dirt, and he's not happy. All right, time for our Togo's big play the Togo's way. We go back to July 25th of last year. Giants taking on the A's when Madison Bumgarner. Hit a solo shot off Chris Bassett. It was the third of his five home runs that he hit last year. Giants won that ball game two to one. And in that game, he went seven strong, allowed five hits, just one run, a couple walks, seven strikeouts. And that's our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. So here's Pagan with one out. Pagan asked for time. Pagan bounced out to second to end the first. Brandon Bell was in the original lineup, but it was a late scratch. They said he's fine. We suppose you just wanted to give him a day after a long night game. Well, he played back to back days, too. Skied out to right, but room for Smolensky. He makes the catch, tagging is Adrianza. So two outs is DeBrunt is trying to get out of this mess, and here's Hunter Pence. Struck out on a pitch in the dirt in the second inning, so he's 0 for 1. Tomlinson to follow. Adrianza at third, Span at first. And a curveball for a strike, and DeBron's been able to steal strikes with that pitch. 
That's a good pitch because you get in that batter's box. You're not thinking about it, anything off speed with him. That's how good his fastball is. I mean, it's hard and it's live and it's unpredictable. It's kind of got a mind of its own. Now, I think there's a pitch right there where he had no intentions of throwing that first strike. Well, I had in the count. I mean, you can throw a breaking ball down the dirt. And the beautiful thing about strike one is you've got a pitch to throw out of the zone, hope the guy chases. You really got two pitches to do that with. Span goes and Pence with a big swing and a foul off right. the backstop. Well, right over the head of Kelby Thomason, who's on deck. And Kelby move over more towards the dugout. See Kelby, the lower right hand side at the bottom of your screen. Sort of fudging just to get as close to behind home plate as he can get to get a good look at the release point of DuBron. Pence on the ground, slowly to third. Chapman charging, juggling, Pence aboard. And the Giants are on the board as Adrianza scores. It is amazing the number of infield hits that Pence will get throughout the course of a season. I mean, if you're playing third base, you're playing deep because he can bring some lasers at you. And when you do get a swing and bunt, if you're coming in on the play, you know you have to hurry it up because Pence can run. And I'm not so sure, even if Chapman comes up with a clean, they're going to get him. They rule it a base hit, and they should. Here's Tomlinson who. Bounced out to third. Chapman made a nice play to his left to glove and throw out Tomlinson. So Span with good speed at second, Pence with good speed at first. This is the big hit if you're putting together a big inning. Chance to catch a break offensively. Ch Chapman can't make the play. Now, if you can put a hit here on DeBrunt, you can put some evil thoughts in his mind. On the ground towards the hole. And the force play is going to end the inning. John Miller will be in. I'll see you back here in the seventh. It's 5-1 Oakland. Homestand April 18th through the 21st. The Giants invite all students, alumni, and fans of Stanford, Cal, and SF State to our college nights at AT&T Park. Each special event ticket package will include a game ticket to see the Giants take on the D-backs and a limited edition co-branded SF College hat. For more information or to purchase tickets, go to sfgiants.com slash special events. We're in the top of the fourth inning. It is 5-1 A's. And here to tell you all about it, John Miller. And the first pitch to... Chapman, a foul down the left field line. 
And the count is 0 and 1. One strength to count to Chapman. The very highly touted young prospect out of the Oakland farm system. And it's 0 and 2. Ben Mazzaro. Always had a good slide. We used to see Mazzaro when he was with Oakland not so long ago. He's become a well traveled pitcher. But he is a commodity in that uh, he's a sinker baller. Came up, but played cleanly by Green, and he just got Chapman at first. Chapman running well for a, a power hitter, especially. Made it close. Grant Green really has been impressive when he's been over at third base. See what Vin Mazzaro has done in five games. Ten hits. And well, the good news is most of those hits have been ground balls that have found a hole. And he is getting ground balls, which is what he's supposed to do. Now the leadoff man, Billy Burns, hit by a pitch in the first inning and scored the first run of the game. Struck out his second time. All and one the count to him. Green plays him shallow at third. Burns is one of the fastest runners in the game. And that is low. One ball, one strike. And you have to respect that, too, if you're playing defensively against Burns. you got to play shallow, limit your range. Really puts pressure on the defense because of the le legs that he has. Now it's two and one. Now in the National League, there's a, a debate who's faster. Is it Billy Hamilton of the Reds or D. Gordon of Miami? And the A's would say who's faster of those three because Billy Burns has that kind of speed. They said. So Burns is aboard. Oakland ahead five to one here in the fourth inning. One out, one on. And Simeon will come up. Nice opposite field approach. And really, if you're hitting left-handed against Mazzaro, that's really how you should approach him because the movement on the fastball you're going to see is going to run away from the left-handed hitter. And if you try and pull it, you roll over. It's a little ground ball to the second baseman. You go with it like Burns just did. You can beat it. It's a nice at bat. So Burns at first. He's running. And he's in there easily. And I don't think Trevor Brown had a chance to throw him out on that one. Although the throw was not that accurate. Well, a great jump. And I think that's one of the things about Burns that really sets him apart from other guys who have great speed is he gets a great first step. He's got good instincts on the pads. And I agree with you, John. I think Mazzaro gave him a pretty good chance to steal a base. He was pretty slow out of the stretch. And he threw a big, slow breaking ball. And not the easiest pitch to throw off of if you're Trevor Brown. But you better pay attention to Burns because he will steal third. Slider dug out of the dirt. Down to the way. Nice pick up there by Trevor Brown. A new ball will be put in play. One ball and one strike. And Billy Burns last year ended up in 125 major league games with the Athletics. Hit 294 and had a 334 on base average. Stole 26 bases. Strong outfield play as well. He covers a lot of ground. One ball, one strike to Marcus Simeon. Bay Area product out of Cal. Whom the Athletics acquired. Before last season in a trade with the Chicago White Sox. One and one the count. Oakland leading five to one. Tomlinson and Simeon is retired as Billy Burns goes to third two down good heavy sink there in the fastball from Rosaro last year Marcus Simeon and the A's were very excited because they they thought very highly of Simeon and the first game of the spring the Giants played the A's over in, in Mesa and Simeon in his first at bat in an Oakland uniform hit a home run 
And then in his second at bat, he hit another home run. And then when the Giants faced Oakland at AT&T Park in an exhibition game at the end of the spring, he hit another home run. I was thinking, who is this guy? And that was all the way at the end of the spring. That was his third home run of the spring. Those were the only three home runs he hit the entire spring. <laughs> the Giants were thinking very highly of him, but they were the only team that against which he was going deep. He ended up hitting 15 home runs in the regular season. Yeah, he's got a, the ability to, to do more than that. Jed Lowry back with the athletics. He doubled home the first run of the game back in the first inning. He struck out his next time. 3-0 the count to him. Lowry went to Houston and had a and nothing went right for him. Hit 222. And they traded him back to Oakland. And he gets a walk. Runners at first and third here in the fourth inning. And now Chris Davis will come up. I always thought that that really said a lot about a guy when he would leave a club and then that club would bring him back. They like him. They know everything about him. I think he's an asset. Maybe the trade dictated that they had to let him go because they wanted to get another entity. And now all of a sudden, boom, they have a chance to bring him back, and they do. I think that speaks well of the player. And Lowry has some Bay Area in his background. He was a star at Stanford. That's a called strike on the outside to Chris Davis. Davis, who had a, a game against the Giants last year with two home runs. And I was a little surprised that Milwaukee would trade him. And I know Milwaukee's going into a rebuilding and whatnot. But he had 392 official at bats last year and hit 27 home runs. And everybody, every team in baseball looking for a guy just like him. The power is at a premium in the game right now. Well, and, and you know, he does have a high strikeout total in those 392 at bats. He had 122 strikeouts. So, I mean, their belief is that uh, they can get him to where he can make more contact. But when he makes contact, I mean, it's loud contact. He can turn the game around with one swing. I mean, he's exciting to watch, and his batting practice is live. And he's got speed to go with it. And, you know, usually you get one or the other. It's not often you see that in the same package. Davis has struck out in this game and has singled home a run. Runners at first and third, two down. Five to one, Oakland ahead. Did he swing? And the call is made by Mike Everett himself. The plate umpire says yes. And that ends the inning. Trevor Brown will be coming up for the Giants. Last of the fourth, the Giants are trailing. Five to one. CSN Bay Area is brought to you by the Law Offices of Stephen Moskowitz. Aggressive, accessible, experienced tax lawyers. Call Moskowitz LLP at 888-TAX-DEAL. 
It's five to one Oakland. We're in the Sonoran Desert. Cactus League action, a Cactus League friendly. The all Bay Area matchup. And we've got blue skies overhead and the mountains and the four peaks off in the distance, on the eastern side of the valley. And the misters are on. It's that kind of a day. I mean, if you're in the sunshine right now, that's that's gotta be a little bit intense. There's ball one from Felix Dubrock to Trevor Brown. The misters, though, you like misters? I do. Although it seems like the misters are going mainly to the people who are in the shade. That's called strike to Brown. One ball, one strike to count now. They're kind of <laughs> going up and helping out our camera guy behind the high home. <laughs> he needs it. Billy Burns trying to shade the eyes with the glove. One away. Well, I've been impressed with DuBron. I mean, for a number of reasons. Obviously, he's throwing well, but the fact that he he took a bullet off the leg, off the bat of Trevor Brown back in the second inning, and he's not showing any ill effects of taking the line drive off the leg. Ball was drilled right back at him, and he hit the deck immediately. He was writhing in pain, and grabbing at that left knee area. But after a while, and the, the trainer came out, worked down the knee a little bit. And then Dubron jumped to his feet, unaided. We're good. Look right back at him. Off the bat of Grant Green and the underhanded feed, out number two. Well, let's take a look at the one that, that came off the bat of Trevor Brown. And then he got all of it, and he gets it with the right leg. And he goes down like... It was a very serious thing, and he laid there for the longest time. But we're thinking man, he could have cracked a bone. But after the sting sort of wore off, he got back up, took a few throws, and said, I'm fine. So two down, Gregor Blanco. And look out. Blanco popped up to shore his first time. Blanco had not played for a few days. He had some uh, lower back pain lower back stiffness two and oh. five to one the athletics are leading a little frustrated with that last pitch he's i think he's actually pitched better against righties than lefties he's missed a lot of pitches up and into left handers on the inside for a strike two and one Of Alonso and Blanco gets the base hit. Alonso almost turned that into an outstanding play. Take a look at Alonso. It's just the bottom of his glove around a little finger killed it. That itself may have saved a two base hit. Blanco is going to have to settle for a single. Well, that's a good point, though. Two outs, especially because I think that with Blanco's speed, that easily would have been a double. So here's Adrianza Blanco at first base only due to the efforts of Yonder Alonso. Adrianza, as Blanco gets back safely, Alonso on the bag with him there. Adrianza singled back in the third inning and scored the Giants only run up till now. They trail five to one in the fourth inning. I just got picked off. You thought, you thought he was throwing the pitch home or what? Yeah, I, I was not only swinging at it in the batter's box, I got picked <laughs> off at first base. <laughs> like you got picked off twice. Yeah, he got me. <laughs> well, he's got an unusual move toward first <laughs> where does. his whole body kind of leans toward the first base line. He's kind of, he, he sort of unhinges the hip. It, it, it doesn't look that dramatic when you see it on tape on a replay but he from, got me from where we're looking right from behind the plate there goes Blanco and he steals it 
And boy, did he guess right. It doesn't take long for a base dealer to, to, to get the tell as to when that pitcher is going to throw to first or home. They say we make that stolen base our Ford right choice. In that we all got picked off in the first throw over. Gregor Blanco not impressed. Our Ford right choice. Good to see him stealing bags. He was having a problem with his lower back. Really had a tightness there. We're just not letting go. Saw him this morning and he said, I feel great. And in the lineup tonight, I could play or today and I could play in the outfield if they need me, but but I feel good. And he definitely showed it there with the stolen base. Pickoff play with Lowry from second base covering. Blanco back in. If you have a tightness in your lower back, you're not feeling like stealing bases. And that's a big part of his game. It's Blanco, who's done some great things for the Giants, he's helped to win two World Series. Chapman, wow, just in time, Blanco. And the, the out was already recorded at first base, but Alonso went ahead and threw home. He wanted the fourth out. We're going to the fifth inning. Still five to one, Oakland. We've got. Still Stadium, Oakland, with a 5-1 to one lead over your San Francisco Giants. And we have a brand new member of the CSN family, our SNC co-anchor, Ahmed Farid, and his wife, Kathleen, welcomed in brand new baby girl, Rui Ann. Eight pounds, ten ounces. Way to go, Kathleen. Good job. She was born at 714 this morning. Mom and baby are very healthy. And Rui is Ahmed's grandmother's name. They're keeping it in the family. Congratulations to all of you. Beautiful, beautiful baby girl. Gentlemen? Yes, indeed. Congratulations. Congratulations to the Farids. Thanks to Amy G. Here we go to the fifth inning now. And Billy Butler, who launched a three-run homer against Bumgarner in the third inning, will lead off for the Athletics. Oakland has... Six of what figure to be their nine regular opening day hitters in the lineup here today, even though it's a split squad day. So they sent most of their regular hitters to the road game with the Giants, and only three of their regular hitters are playing in the home game over in Mesa, which is a little bit unusual. Although their ace starter, their opening day starter, Sonny Gray, is pitching in that game. Well, you're right. It is unusual. Usually you keep the majority of your big leaguers at home on a, on a weekend game. One ball, one strike to count to Billy Butler. Josh Fegley is on deck. The only regulars not here are the third baseman, Danny Valencia. There's Tomlinson. And Butler is gone. He's now one for three. Also, Josh Reddick, the right, the right fielder, and the catcher, Stephen Vogt. 
the only regulars back in Mesa for the split squad game. Giants had their lineup in last night here on a Friday night. Really the first time the, the whole lineup was in there at, at the same time. And it worked out pretty well. They, they flexed their muscles a bit here last night. They looked fantastic. Hunter Pence was one of the Giants to hit a home run. And, and a lot of Giants hit home runs here last night. Well, you could sense just at the start of the game that they were excited that they were all out there on the same, at the same time. Because, you know, they, they, they all like this particular lineup that they have. And this morning, Hunter Pence... In a conversation, he says, well, how'd you like the, the game last night? I said, well, we liked it. The offense was unbelievable. He goes, well, if we can stay healthy, we can do something special. And, and that's kind of the feeling they have. It's a nice confidence for a team to have this early in the year. One ball and two strikes to Fegley. Man, 100 pence. When he speaks, people listen. Uh, he's a guy. He's a, he's a leader in that clubhouse. And his energy and his passion for the game... And it rubs off. A lot of guys get that from him. That's just through. Grant Green made the dive, but the Cactus League infield very hard, very fast, and a hit for Fegley. Fans MLB.tv Premium, everything you have come to expect and more. There's a new low price for 2016. Watch every out-of-market game of all 30 teams live in true HD. On over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Here is Yonder Alonso, who's had two singles and a run scored in this game. Ricky Romero, and they get the put out. Fegley over to second. Romero, who started here in the fifth inning, in from the Giants' bullpen. Romero. He's kind of an intriguing guy, big league experience, and at one time, he was one of the top starters for the Toronto Blue Jays. Well, he's really had a lot of injuries the last couple of years, and he's throwing healthy, and uh, and he's had a nice spring. And that play is especially difficult for a left-handed pitcher. He made it easily. But he is definitely in the mix. It's been a really nice story here in Giants camp. Ball one to Smolensky. Now, Romero, his first full season, where even then he started in the minor leagues back in 2009, but he won 13 games for the Blue Jays, 14 the next year, and 15 the year after. Playing in that tough American League East against the Yankees, against the Red Sox, who always have a lot of boppers in their lineup, tough ballparks in which to pitch. Camden Yards is a small ballpark. Toronto. Is a park where home run hitters thrive. And uh, he put up some good years. One year, the 15 game season, 2011, had a 2.92 ERA. Well, you do that in that division, in that ballpark, his home ballpark. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a heck of a season. A lot of very offensive ballparks in American League East. Ricky Romero. That's called strike two and two to Smolensky, who's doubled and grounded out. Romero is 31 years old, and he's trying to mount a comeback. He was on the disabled list last year. The Blue Jays released him finally, and the Giants signed him to a minor league contract. Span, a lot of room out there, the deep part of the yard, and he lost it. Couldn't see it. Coming in to score is Fegley. Just as we thought he was getting to it, all of a sudden, he couldn't see it, and the ball drops for a double and a run batted in for Smolensky, 6-1 to one Oakland. And that's what he's looking into, and it is right behind home play. You can tell by the shadow of the players in the middle of the diamond that they are going to have some problems with the sun. And you can see the reflection in his glasses. I mean, he had an idea where it was going to be. And then at the end, nothing. And you cannot catch what you cannot see. So here is Matt Chapman, the young prodigy out of the Oakland farm system. He takes a strike. He had 23 homers last year in 80 games in A ball. And 
Today he's gone over two, but made a couple of beautiful plays at third base. One ball and one strike to count. Well, I can't say we're surprised. Once we saw there were no clouds overhead at all, we sort of anticipated that there could be some balls that would be lost in the sun. So there's the first one. Romero's got it. And hopefully he's okay. He's heading off the field under his own power. It is six to one. Oh, closed captioning is presented by. SN Bay Area is brought to you by AAA. Get an insurance quote from AAA by March 31st, and you'll get a free carry-all tote. Restrictions apply. Go to AAA branch for details. On a hot day, temperatures were forecast to reach about 91 degrees in the valley today. And the big crowd here watching the All-Bay Area Spring Training Cactus League matchup. Sellout crowd. This this is one of the most coveted tickets of the entire Cactus League schedule for this one on this Saturday. New pitcher for the Athletics is Denard Span leads off for the Giants. Ryan Dowell, right handed, comes in. Span is grounded out and walked. And for Dowell, he's not a tall pitcher. He's 5'9, 175 pounds. Got to the big leagues last year after. Four years in the minor leagues. Had a nice spring. Five strikeouts in three and two thirds. Have not given up a run yet. And what you're going to see from him is uh, two types of fastball. Got a little slider and a changeup, and it's a good one. In his minor league career, 209 innings, all out of the bullpen, 259 strikeouts against 49 walks, a five to one strikeout walk ratio. Billy Burns trying to shade the eyes with the glove. One away. Joe Panic is coming up. Pagan on deck. Giants. Uh, Johnny Cueto, who got hit in the forehead with a line drive in his first pitch of last Monday night's game over in Mesa. Billy Burns of the Athletics hit that first pitch. A screamer right back to the mound. And Cueto was able to continue that game and ended up pitching three innings. His second start of the spring. But he has not pitched since then. With Bumgarner returning to the rotation after missing his previous start today. There was a question before the game about well when's Cueto. Right now the plan apparently is for Cueto to pitch tomorrow but likely not against the Rockies up at talking stick. Simeon. Uh, number two. And panic is 0 for 3. But the Instead of facing the divisional rival, the Rockies tomorrow, 
the plan may well be, and, and the Jacks haven't said that definitely the plan may well be that he'll pitch over the minor league camp for Cueto's next start. Pagan is grounded out, flight out to right. And now he'll bat left-handed for the first time today. Six to one, Oakland leading the Giants in the last of the fifth. Two down, nobody on against Dull. A slider in there for a called strike. It is unusual to see a pitcher 5-9 at the big league level, but not unheard of. I mean, some of the greatest pitchers in Major League history were not that tall. Whitey Ford was 5-10. They had uh, Greg Maddox, I and mean, he was under 6 feet tall. Pedro Martinez, not a big guy. All Hall of Famers. Whitey Ford, dude. His nickname was the chairman of the board. Three and one to, to Pagan now. Two down bases empty here in the fifth inning. Or is it the scoreboard says three and one, but the I think the umpire just says two and oh, so. What's the count? Anybody know? And that's a foul. How could the count be two and oh? And the scoreboard's got it at three and one. Well, yeah, and well, it, I don't know. So it's actually two and two now. There we go. And the scoreboard has that. I just get a little upset when the scoreboard has it wrong because it just makes uh, makes me look bad. I don't know what the count is. I'm just reading it off the scoreboard. Why don't you just go ahead and blab that to everybody? Yeah, well, you know, umpires <laughs> do that, too. I mean, they'll rely on the scoreboard every once in a while during the course of the year. The, the uh, scoreboard will go down. And umpires, you know, they, they, they'll forget what the count is. It happens. Well, and it's happened where they've given a guy a walk on ball three because the scoreboard had the wrong count out there. That's happened. I mean, I used to be a part of an umpire's equipment, the little hand tool that used to... The count balls and strikes. Yeah, but uh, it, it, like Mike Everett today, he doesn't have one. Totally relying on the scoreboard. It's extinct that that counter. That's a fair ball. Alonso and the ball is missed. Pagan's going to dig for second. Fegley's throw safe at second. Simeon covering. Pagan took a chance there, and the ball got by. Ryan Dowell, but he did make it to second. On a, it was a good throw by Fegley. I thought that was a pretty good throw from Alonzo. I mean, Dowell's got to make that play. I mean, that's above the belt. It really, he just missed it. I mean, they have given the air to Dowell. I mean, there's a heck of a play from Alonzo. He sort of has the momentum going away from the play. He throws a very catchable ball right around the belt. But a nice heads-up play for Pagan. Who never stopped. So just like that, he puts himself in scoring position for Hunter Pence, down five runs. Pence has struck out and had an infield hit and a run batted in. Giants are down six to one. Pence, who homered here last night. Back out of play. One on the count. Well, I, the only thing I could figure is maybe there are a lot of bright shirts and Panama hats and whatnot in the sunshiny day. Maybe, maybe from the angle he was seeing that throw from Alonso, maybe they, they maybe just lost the ball out of that the sea of of white in the background in the, in the seats. It looked like a it looked like a perfect throw. Yeah, Good Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the best plays we've seen today. I think that's frustrating, too, for a player. You do everything right, and the guy doesn't catch the ball. Serious business. But he gets credit for an assist. It, it, it doesn't hurt his own fielding percentage. But he doesn't get the applause. That's true. Owen to the count. Of course, he's in an Oakland uniform playing the Giants in the Giants' home bar. How much of an applause was he going to get? <laughs> well, that's a good point. <laughs> Pitch down on strikes. We're going to the sixth inning now. Five to one. Open.
of Giants baseball. Log on to csnbayarea.com as insider Alex Pavlovich will provide wire-to-wire reporting of the Giants' upcoming season with breaking news, videos, special features, and more only on csnbayarea.com. Several changes for the Giants, although Kelby Tomlinson's still in there. And he throws out Billy Burns. Anytime there's a ground ball by Billy Burns, and you're on the left side of the infield in particular, you're under duress. That's a, that's a very stressful play. Handled nicely by Tomlinson. The Giants have a, a whole new right side of the infield. Tomlinson's still in there at short, and Grant Green's still at third. As Marcus Simeon heads up. Oakland ahead six to one, not five to. I think I said five to one. It's six to one. Oakland. They got to run in the fifth against Romero, and that ball lost in the sun. The count is 0 and one. But uh, Connor Gillespie's at first. Eri Adrianza has moved from first to second, so it's now Adrianza at second. Whole new outfield in the lineup for the Giants. With Williamson in left, Hernandez in center, and Parker in right. Marcus Simeon has flied out deep to right, singled and scored, and grounded out to short. One for three. Two and one the count. One out, nobody on. Romero misses off the outside. Three and one. One thing about Ricky Romero, he's from Southern California, and, and he kind of Shrugs and says, "What? What could I do about it?" Because he grew up a Dodger fan. And from where he's from, that's probably the most likely outcome. He's going to be a Dodger fan, but he knows about being on both sides of a big rivalry because he went to Garfield High School, whose big rivals are who are their big rivals? Roosevelt, Roosevelt High School, and at the. Playing on the for Garfield High School, he transferred to Roosevelt High School. God, that's unheard of. <laughs> that really is. I mean, that is an intense rivalry of those schools. I know we're talking about high school, but trust me when I say that it, it's live. These are the defensive substitutions. No, that's uh, Mac Williamson is in left field, not not Ryan Lawless. Gorky Hernandez in center, Jared Parker in right, Adrianza at second, and Connor Gillespie now at first for the Giants. And for the A's, Tyler Leitendorf pinch hits for Jed Lowry. Out of play. Two down, nobody on. But we're... Romero is from in East L.A. I mean, that's just in the shadow of Dodger Stadium. You, you have to root for the Dodgers. Grant Green. And a strong inning. Three up, three down for Romero. Last of the six, Kelby Tomlinson and Trevor Brown do up. The Giants trail six to one.
FSN Bay Area is brought to you by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. In the desert. Did you shoot this, Mike? Wow. Uh, I did today on my uh, my uh, motorcycle. It looks so hot out there. I don't know how you did it. Good camera work. One of the peaks here in the, the valley. Is that a peak or a butte? That looked like Squaw Peak is what it looked like. There it is. Uh, that's Camelback. Squaw Peak is just to the west of Camelback. And you can climb up there. It's a great workout. Dave Fleming climbed uh, Camelback when he was here last week. It really is a fun workout. And uh, Squaw Peak is not as traveled as Camelback. Camelback on a weekend, it's... Uh, you can run into some traffic. Kelby Tomlinson, 0 for 2 in the game. Facing Ryan Dahl. And it's one ball and two strikes. I was doing the Camelback Mountain. It was, it was a few years back. It was very early in the morning. We had a day game. So there are a lot of shadows, and I was wearing sunglasses and whatnot. And I'm, I'm coming down, and I stumble and fall. Struck him out. Nasty pitch right there. And uh, that is one away. So, and I, I've got I've got blood on my knees and my hand. I got little pebbles, and cuts, and whatnot. And I think, well, well, thank goodness it's seven o'clock in the morning, and I'm up here. Nobody will know anything about it. So I get up and I try to get all these little rocks out of my legs and my hands. Start to head back down, and within 30 seconds, I hear, John, hey, oh, what happened to you? Ed Montague. <laughs> The umpire <laughs> on his way up, Camelback. Hey, you were caught. <laughs> on one to Trevor Brown. Brown has had an infield hit. He's the one to hit the line drive off the leg of Oakland starter Felix Dubron back in the second inning. He flied out to center in the fourth. Dubron seemed to be okay. He stayed in the game and ended up pitching four. Strong, he allowed only one run in his four innings. And the count is two and one now to Trevor Brown. Jacks will have nine of their first 13 regular season games on the road. The four home games in those first two weeks with the Dodgers. We will be there for the Giants home opener on Thursday, April the 7th. The Giants go right back out on the road again after that. But when they get home on April 18th, they'll have a 10-game homestand, and Arizona comes in. And Mike, the, the D-backs who have added Zach Greinke and Shelby Miller, two strong starting pitchers, and they figure to be a, a real player in the division race with the Giants and the Dodgers. Three and two now to Trevor Brown. So those are going to be big games. Anytime they meet Arizona, they're in for four games starting Monday, April 18th, and. Good seats are available as you see the early schedule. The Giants had the four home games sandwiched around a lot of road games, and after they go to Colorado, they got more road games after that. That's all for Trevor Brown. Another strikeout. That's three straight strikeouts for Dow. So two down, nobody on. And here comes Grant Green. Well, the Giants get home the 18th in those 10 games. Now is the time to get. Some good deals on tickets. Early in the season, Arizona in for four. Then Barry Bonds comes back to San Francisco as the hitting instructor for Miami over the weekend. That homestand. And then Arizona. And then Colorado will be in the final series of that homestand. So there's some good deals to be had at sfgiants.com. Check it out. Grant Green is singled and grounded out. One for two in the game. Two down, nobody on. Well, the Diamondbacks is much improved. And if spring training means anything, they're having a great spring. They're 13 and 4 and it has 7 0 today. So they're definitely playing with a lot of confidence. And the, their fans are very excited as they, they should be, and as you would figure they'd be after the, the big moves, the bold moves that they made in the offseason. They also brought in Gene Segura from Milwaukee to be their shortstop. 
Nice pick there by Simeon. Low throw, but dug out by Alonso to end the inning. Six to one Oakland heading to the seventh. Dwayne Kuyper will return from the radio side when we return. We've got. Series Monday, April 18th through the 21st. So check out the $9 dynamic deals for the Diamondback Series. Don't miss your chance at game tickets starting at just nine bucks. Go to sfgiants.com slash dynamic deals and check it out. We are heading to the top of the seventh inning. The A's on top of the Giants by a score of six to one. And here once again, Dwayne Kuyper. All right, Mike, and a couple of changes, and it's six one as we'll Get you caught up as to what's going on. First and foremost, the Giants do have a new pitcher. It's George Contos. There's George. Take a look at his numbers in five spring training games. Four and two thirds innings amassed. No walks, two strikeouts, six hits allowed. 1.93 ERA. You'll see a low 90s fastball, two types of fastball. Good slider, one of the best on the Giants team. Change up in a curveball. So here's Chris Davis. Can you tell your two gamer babes to sit down? Yeah. Uh, hun, grab some pine. One listened. I can't see home plate. Well, <laughs> literally, you can't see home plate. And the pitch is Caught. very high. <laughs> That's right. Just flip a coin. See this woman now. She's going to sit down. All right. Now, now. I can see. There we go. See our dilemma. And a bit. So was the pitch high? I missed it. No. No. It, it was low. Hit to left. And Williamson is there. What now? And here's Billy Butler. You are close to the fans here at Scottsdale Stadium, and you know it's interesting. Is this is the way it was supposed to be back at AT&T Park? Yeah. And they sit right below you. And if they stand up, you can't see. Here's Billy Butler who homered off of Bumgarner in the third. It's it's not like we dislike our fans, but it is a bit of a distraction. It certainly would have been if the Giants hadn't changed things in our booth back in San Francisco. We do have some changes. Hector Lee is now at short and Romero Pena is at third. The old one. Foul. Look out. But it does happen at the big league level where there are times that you are obstructed with fans. It happens in uh, the Mets new ballparks. City field. And it can happen to you. If you're doing radio in San Diego. 
if fans stand up. It blocks you off. This guy right here? That's a problem. Where is he at? Oh. Into center field. And that's going to fall. So Butler with a base hit. Yeah, so if that gentleman moved over, then uh, yeah, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> I mean, he's a big fella. About 6'6", six, six, about 260. If he got in front of us, we'd be guessing. We'd be guessing. Flip him out to coins. We'd, we'd be guessing more than we guess. Here's Fegley. I mean, you're supposed to have the green monster in center field, not standing in front of you in the booth. <laughs> we, uh, the first year of this ballpark, we we're actually in the booth doing radio right where that gentleman was was standing. Here's the 0-1 and a swing and a miss by Fegley. And there was, and this was, remember, this is what? Probably 15, 16, 17 years ago. And uh, doing the game with Hank Greenwald, right below us, there was a gentleman that every game he smoked a cigar. And it worked its way right into the nose of Hank Greenwald. <laughs> That's a direct hit. Driven to left. Williamson on the move, and he's not going to get it. He will get it on a hop. Williamson's throw is going to go into second, so it holds Fegley to a single. A pretty nice play there from Williamson, just to keep Fegley at first base. Those are things that pitchers appreciate. So here's Alonzo. So Hank was in a battle a lot, but it was really interesting. It was about 10 years later, Hank started to smoke cigars, and it went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> a candlestick, he would smoke them. So here's Alonzo, who's two for three. drive foul down the left field line. 12 hits now for the A's to this inning. Actually, I thought Romero threw the ball well. Threw the ball very well. He's had a nice camp. I mean, here's a guy that he knows the deal with the Giants. There's no spots in the rotation for him. And who knows, maybe he's a guy that, that can't start anymore. But, you know, the Giants are going to find out. Down low, one ball and one strike. Well, all he can do is is make a tough decision for the Giants. I mean, that's his goal. And uh, you know, as this game can often provide opportunity because of injuries. If you're in the right place at the right time, boom, you got a job. But he has pitched very well this spring. Well, he's not pitching just to show the Giants he can pitch. He's... Well, that's the one thing that is great about the big league level here you're getting scouted every game I mean you look down below us and there's probably 15 20 scouts down below and every team this time of spring they know where their weaknesses are and they're looking at other teams for possible remedies for some of those weaknesses and pitching is always in demand good and, pitch two and two and if you're a veteran like Romero who's had a great track record you're coming back from an injury if all these scouts are seeing you're throwing the ball well, you know, you've got good speed on the gun, you've got good break on the breaking ball, you're commanding everything, guess what? You get an opportunity. Maybe not here, but someplace else. Two balls, two strikes. Yonder Alonzo. Figley with his lead at first. Down at third is Butler. And it's three and two. On deck is Smolensky. Runner goes. Swinging a high foul. That'll be out of play down the left field line. But almost somehow got back onto the field. But the very last second that guy stopped it. Two. 
Little guy who brought his glove. It's a good fan. Three and two. Runner goes into the gap. Left center field. Williamson is over. He's going to make the catch. Taggy is Butler. He's going to score. It's seven to one. So nice at bat for Alonzo as he picks up the RBI. So here's Smolinski. Smolenski's got a couple of doubles. The double in the fifth was a ball that Span got underneath it, but he just couldn't see it. It dropped about five feet to his left. And the pitch is high. One ball and no strikes. George Cantos wanted to know where it was. I think he's got a pretty good point. So you saw the same thing I did. And George Cantos, I mean, he doesn't normally give a, an umpire a long, hard stare. Gorky Hernandez. Side retired. A run for the A's. 7 1 as we head to the bottom of the seven. By your local Toyota dealer. Well, what's happened today? If you just joined us, we're going to tell you. 7 1 A's. Dubrant, after getting hit with a line drive in the back of the lake, stayed in the game. And uh, he pitched pretty well. He threw 62 pitches. Butler's got a home run. Smolenski's got a couple of doubles. Bumgarner got knocked around a bit, two and two thirds. Seven hits, four strikeouts, no walks. Hunter Pence. Hunter Pence. We're highlighting Hunter Pence. One for three. RBI single. An infield hit. And he'll take it. So we have multiple changes that we're going to let you guess to see who's in the game. And hopefully your guesses are better than your NCA to a brackets. I did not do well. But we do know who's pitching for the A's. And that would be Liam Hendricks. This will be the fourth game he's been in. Three innings pitched on the spring. He's given up six hits. Hendricks came over to the A's in the trade with Toronto for Jesse Chavez, 27 years old, out of Perth, Australia. Low 90s fastball. He's got a changeup and a curveball. And a call strike to Gregor Blanco, who's single in the fourth. Low to mid 90s fastball. He opened up the first pitch of this outing with a 94 mile hour fastball. Blown away to Blanco with Adrianza to follow. Yeah. 
And block will take low again. Perth, it's two balls in one strike. Perth, Australia, the western coast. You know, it's been 20 years since we've been to Australia. Yeah, I know. They said the country hasn't changed the lick since we've <laughs> I believe that. We enjoyed it. It's fun. Good place. Blocko takes low. Three and one to Blanco. And the walk. Pretty good day for Gregor Blanco, who's been on the shelf because of some lower back pain. He's been on base a couple times with a walk and a knock. Stole a base. So far, he's been the offensive player of the game. I agree. For the Giants. Here's Adrianza, who singled in the third inning and scored. Carson Blair is now catching Hendricks as Adrianza fouls it out of play. Oh, yeah. Hot dog, got my glove, great seats, perfect fold in my hat. Life is good. It looks good. Which is high. My oldest son, Jarek, flew in uh, Friday from New York to spend the weekend here. And uh, could not wait to get to the ballpark. And I said, why? Because I want a hot dog. Could not wait for baseball. 1-1 one, one pitch is down low. Two balls and one strike. And I'm sure that he got one. He got two. Blanco at first. So I'm going to foul into the glove of Blair. It's two balls, two strikes. Hendricks at the belt. And it's fouled down the left field line. Look out. Pay attention. You have to in this ballpark. I mean, but I guess if you're a Giants fan, you're kind of used to it. Proximity from the side to the field back at AT&T in San Francisco, it's close too. Bring your glove. Pay attention. Snap throw and Blanco is back easily. Kind of getting interested as to how they changed the the backstop configuration at AT and T, as mandated by Major League Baseball. Everybody around the big leagues are going to be making it a bit safer behind home plate now. It's tinted glass. It's really unique. <laughs> Bulletproof, inch thick. Two balls, two strikes. And the screen that they have here at Scottsdale really is probably 30% bigger than the old screen that the Giants had at AT&T. It was definitely the smallest backstop in baseball. Hit on the ground and a big hop for Muncie. And they get the out at second is Martin juggled it. And I'm not sure the fans are very excited about the screen being put up in front of them. Well, it's not something that the Gi Giants had a choice. No. Major League Baseball said this is the new rule. Abide. So you you 
do it the best you can and make it look the best you can. Here's Hernandez. Hernandez takes down low. But I, I think a lot of the discussion involving bigger screens and safer environments has to do not only with foul balls, but with the broken bats that were going into the stands. Foul back. Marquise Hernandez with a mighty swing, one ball and one strike. When the Maplewood bats came into the game, and it was during the Barry Bonds era, we started seeing more broken bats and more fragmented bats going into the stands on on balls that uh, jammed guys and broke their bats up. And ironically, none of them came from the guy you're talking about. When Barry Bonds first got his Maplewood bat, and I believe it was like 1996 or 7. He used one bat for almost the whole year. And where guys would have a bat specifically for the game and they'd use the other bats for batting practice, he used that, that same bat for BP and the game. Get on the ground slowly to the third. Chapman has it. His throw to first is in time. I've been impressed with Chapman at third base today. Yeah, very good. Here's Connor Gillespie. See his spring training numbers. Hit 286. And he definitely has a chance to go north with this club. And it would be as a bench player, and his specialty would be pinch hits late in the game. High to left field. And a diving catch is Marinko. Nice play, and that'll end the inning. So Gillespie will not get another swing because of this play. And we will head to the eighth. To Sportsnet Central tonight at 6 p.m. right here in Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. It'll be all about the Giants and the A's, the NCAA tournament updates, and the Sharks and Rangers. A recap. Six. Tonight. So here's Chapman facing Javier Lopez. First pitch is down low. Lopez replaces Cantos, who replaced. 
Romero who replaced Pizarro who replaced Bumgarner. The numbers for Javier Lopez this spring fifth game that he's been in. Last time we saw him he looked great It was this time last year that he kind of reinvented himself in a way brought back a changeup that he hadn't thrown in about five years and it was a great pitch especially to right handed hitters. When Bruce Bochy immediately reacted to that. And he started letting him throw whole innings against right handed hitters and he did well. Now he'll still specialize against lefties a lot during the course of a season but this guy right here Bochy he will not hesitate in letting him face guys if, if he needs him to go a whole inning. And a pop up. Is this no man's land? No, it isn't. It is Hernandez puts it away. Let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, guys. Gregor Blanco fresh off the field and fresh off of testing a back that has been oh. sore for you. Why don't you let fans know kind of what's been going on and how does it feel after going out there? Well, just have a, a little tight back, like you say. Uh, it was more of an oblique thing than, than back. I thought it was my back, but it was a little bit more of, of the oblique. I do MRI and it was just a, a bruise. Uh, uh, on it, so it wasn't that bad, you know. So just a couple of days, and it feels awesome to be back. I was like, I feel like so bad now. I feel like I'm, it's me again. You know, happy, get back on the field. You know, feel exciting. So it's it's good to be back for sure. It looked like you gave it a good test there too with a stolen base, and you were able to pop up pretty quickly. I know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It feels so much better. You know, before it was really restricted. Uh, to to sweep the bat, even to run, to throw to, to uh, throw the ball. But now I feel free. I feel free. I feel like I just wanna run a, a home run, you know, from from uh, from from hitting, you know. Uh, so it's it's awesome. It's awesome I, to be back. I think the fans would like that too. I, I think they'll right. take it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, tell us a little bit about your preparation in spring training. You're in this really unique role as a fourth outfielder. You can play multiple outfield positions. So you have a lot going on. How how do you kind of channel in on what it is you need to do and, and what are the different things that you need to do? Well, if even they, if they need me as a bad boy, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one, you know, seriously. I'm the one. <laughs> but, uh, well, just, uh, uh, I just I just do what, what everybody does right now in spring training. I think everybody just focus on on really uh, just get, get in shape and 100% you feel uh, your body feel 100% to play the game. And uh, as myself, I just wanted to stay uh, uh, ready, you know, for any situation, especially right, right now from, from now on. You know, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a little different than before uh, and, and just uh, be ready for any situation. Uh, I think I just wanted to uh, to contribute for the team. And you really use your off season to stay in shape because you were posting some videos on Instagram and you were kind of like like in He-Man mode. So you use that time wisely, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, really, uh, really focus on, on that. Even even uh, eating, you know, I, I even have a, a chef that uh, that, uh, that I went to my house and cooked for me the whole winter, you know. So those kind of stuff I'm really aware, especially that I'm in fourth half fielder. I don't play uh, every day, so I have to maintain myself in shape and 100% uh, and, uh, and of my ability. So to be able to do it, it's, it's, it's a little bit more, more, uh, more hard work uh, off the field. You know, uh, for the guys that are playing every day, they can eat whatever they want because they're playing every day, but not me. You know, so I got to just trying to maintain my, my, my body uh, weight and, and, uh, and uh, be, be ready to go for, for, for anything. All right, Dwayne and Mike, if you guys do one of his workouts, you too can eat whatever you want. Gentlemen. We do anyway. <laughs> not a problem. Come on. Muncie and Martin strike out. Giants are coming up. Conquer that for a
lead for the A's as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And Mac Williamson is going to lead things off. Mac Williamson has had a great spring. Take a look at those numbers. Four home runs, 11 driven in. Well, he does not have the same swing right now that he had early in spring when he was hot. And uh, he's really fighting kind of a, a flying front shoulder right now. He's been rolling over the ball the last couple games. And where he was seeing everything big early on, now all of a sudden he has lost his strike zone. And evidence of that, the first, that last swing, I mean, he swung out a ball of strike zone. When he was hot, he wasn't swinging out of the strike zone. So hey, you just keep work, working to try and find it again. You're in either two phases. One, you're trying to find it, or two, you're trying to keep it, prolong it. And that's it. That's the mentality of, a, of any player up here, either whether you're a pitcher or a hitter. If you're locked in, work hard to keep it going and do it as long as you can. If you're not locked in, work hard to find it. Just outside and low, two balls, two strikes. Even his batting practice we watched yesterday, and he was rolling over a lot. And the thing is, I mean, you know you're doing it. And it's just hard to make that adjustment to get back in. Get on the ground towards the hole, and what's new? Another hit. Well, that'll help. Here's Parker. So Parker, he steps up. He, like Mac Williamson, has had a really good spring. With three home runs and nine driven in. Heck, Julie is on deck. JC 94, you got a piece of it. It's no balls and one strike. Both these guys are excited because of their their strength and their ability to hit the ball in the ballpark. Williamson, Parker. And you just know at any given time, they could make big time contact and turn a game around. And that makes them a commodity. The 0 2. Got him with a high fastball. Nice elevation with the 95 across the letters. So here's Lee. When you hit that fastball command and you're able to establish a knee high location and then elevate by changing sight lines, such an effective way to get guys out. And that's what everybody's looking for down here. That type of command with every one of their pitches. Four for 13 for Hack Julie. As that pitch runs in tight for a ball. One ball and one strike. A's have only used three pitchers today. It's the time of spring training. You're starting to see everybody stretch out. Next week, you'll start to see pitchers get into the fifth and sixth innings. You start to see players play nine innings. Play back-to-back -back days. Just very 
subtly start to piece it together. Out of play. And that evens a count at two balls and two strikes. Saw Bruce Bochy and his coaches. A lot of decisions these guys have to make here in the next week and a half. It's an exciting time, but it's also a tough time. But I always like that one moment in spring training when the, when the team got set. To me, that was that was exciting because it meant that the 25 that made it had survived another spring and they were ready to go stand on the baseline and be introduced as a big leaguer on opening day. It's just a, it's just a great tradition. Get on that plane, knowing that you made the 25-man roster. Pretty cool. Two-two pitch. That foul. I'll do it again. And sometimes there are long shots. Who'd have thought? What was it? Now four years ago, Gregor Blanco, non-roster invited. Now look at him. Yeah, Joaquin Arias. Guys that fought to make a club and opening happened. They took advantage of it. Got him. Now, I mean, look with Gregor Blanco. He, his workout now is so famous that if you do his workout, you can eat anything you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're on the same program. We do our workout and we can eat wow. anything we want. Amy. The only thing stopping us is our doctor. Here's Trevor Brown. Brown chases the high fastball. See why the A's went out and got this guy. He throws good. Yeah. Well, they gave up a good arm to get him. Jesse Chavez is a good arm. And they got a good arm. The A's wanted to clean up their bullpen, and they did. Got him, and that'll end the inning. We will head to the ninth here at Scottsdale Stadium. In front of over 12,000 folks, it's 7-1 Hayes.
spring on CSN and NBC Bay Area. There are three tele televised games remaining. The next one will be a week from tomorrow, Monday, the 28th of March, a 7 p.m. game. The Giants will take on the Diamondbacks. You see that right here on CSN. And then a Thursday game when the Giants get back to San Francisco, the first game of the Bay Bridge Series against the A's, and that will be a 7 o'clock start against the A's on CSN. And then Friday... It will be April 1st, and uh, the Giants will take on the, the Athletics for Game 2 of that series. You'll see that on NBC Bay Area. Good job. Put it down on your calendar. Join Good us job. if you will. Good job. Love to have you. I wasn't going to watch any of those until you did that, and now I'm in. You are in now. Here's Leidendorf to face Santiago Casilla here in the ninth. A's with a 7-1 to one lead. And Casilla, a former A, wings that ball high. One ball and no strikes. Photo up. Hey, get the girls all together. It's Hooters Day here at the ballpark. One ball and no strikes. And... Casilla at 91 evens the count. Been throwing the ball great this spring. Casilla, he'll be the closer for the Giants as they start the season. Took a little time to get going, but when he finally said, I'm good to go, he has been good to go. Two balls and a strike. Two and two. One in the first, one in the second. And then three runs in the third, and the A's are off and rolling. High three and two. Trevor Brown catching all nine innings today. Foul back. So Lindorf hung in there pretty well on a 3 2 breaking ball. I think that's one of the things that is always a concern for a staff. When you start to figure out how you're going to get your catcher's legs ready for a, a long season. Physically, that is the most grueling position on the field. Hernandez moving over, and he'll make the catch. One out. And that'll bring up number 39. It's Blair. When in doubt, go with the number. 47 on deck. Outside to Blair, Carson Blair. One ball and no strikes. Brian Anderson is on deck. Two balls and no strikes. You know, the other thing, too, the last two days, the Giants have had night games. They're playing more night games now than they have in previous seasons. And the one thing that you kind of fall victim to is when you have the day game after two night games. You're not used to that. No. And, you don't think it's a big deal, but it is. This is a game that you play every day, and routine is such a big part of your season, but you have to get guys ready for playing the day game after a night game. Yeah, you rock along and you play 10 day games in a row, and all of a sudden you go back to back on a couple of night games, and it'll mess with you just a little bit.
Souvenir time. It just fell in my hands. Two balls and one strike to Carson Blair here in the ninth. Good breaking ball, two and two. Three hits and 15 at bats this spring for Blair. And now back to back hitters go three and two to Casilla. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he corrects his delivery. He got underneath that last fastball and pushed it. And he knew it as soon as he threw it. Now you, know, you make the correction to try to get back on top. Look out. Breaking ball. Did not miss by much. So here's Anderson. You make adjustments on every swing as a hitter. You make adjustments on every pitch as a pitcher. It's not as easy in spring as it is in the regular season when you gain full command of your motion or your swing. So Anderson steps up. And the pitch is high. One ball and no strikes. Brown goes out. I mean, he's made a couple trips out there today. One time with Madison Bumgarner, got him back in the strike zone after a 3 0 count. And here, if he's sensing an overthrow or something of a mechanical sense, I mean, he feels that he can go out there and correct it. And, you know, that, I think that says. A lot about a young catcher, and that's how you earn the respect of your of your pitching staff. So this one squirts away from Brown, and Blair will move into second base. And right now, Casilla is struggling to find the release point. He's a little bit out of whack. By the way, 12,095. There's still a crowd here. Bright sunny day. Temperatures in the high 80s, up around 90. 90. Did it hit 90? 90. There's a strike. Well, I guess when you see the misters coming on, it's at 90. Uh, I think I, I, I think that's the bar. 89, they don't come on. 90? <laughs> Here they come. It has cool things off. Two balls and one strike. It's the hat you need on daylight today. Swing and a miss. That's good breaking ball right there. Stay on top of that nice. They sit on the outside corner. This thing goes down and in. Still good, late, quick snap. Gets Anderson to swing over the top. Throw that again. So here's Marinko. Tyler Marinko. Look out. Up and in. One ball and no strikes. You see, it's one of those guys where if you're right handed hitter and his arm slot gets a little weird, you got to be careful. Blair is at second with two outs. We're in the ninth. Who jumped on 93 like he knew it was coming?
got power. Had 14 home runs last year in Stockton. The year before that, he had 18. You do that at any level in professional baseball, you hit double digit home runs. I mean, you, you've got pop. Breaking ball misses, two balls and one strike. What's the most you ever hit home run wise in the minor leagues? Three. I always felt like if you hit three, yeah, you were considered a guy that could go deep any time. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. Wrapped foul, two and two. I can see how you think that. I thought it. Nobody else thought it. That's all right. It doesn't matter. As long as I was feeling good when my head hit the pillow. They're booing him. Didn't have the right hat on. Three two again from Santiago Casilla. Well, the last time he had a three two, he threw a breaking ball. Three balls, two strikes. Left center field, a good ride. Williamson on the move, and it is gone. Yeah, that's the power we're talking about, and that indeed was a 3-2 curveball. Just kind of a get it in curveball, didn't want to walk him. And watch the hang right up around the belt. And that turned out to be a nice at bat. I'd say that kid earned that one. Yeah, he did. Nice play out there by one of the fans. And by the way. So here's Edwin. Diaz and he takes the strike. It has been all A's today. A's nine runs on 13 hits. Two of them. Of which have left the ballpark. Look out. Two balls and one strike. <laughs> Diaz over from minor league camp. He does not have an appearance this spring. Hopped up, and that'll be a souvenir. Two and two. So a 28 pitch inning for Santiago Casilla. Hit brought his glove. And he ended up with it. There you go. It's going to be his last hitter no matter what. I would imagine. So. And another 3 2 count. Hasn't been able to avoid that today. Who's got it? Adrianza side retired. Add two more for the A's. It's 9 1, Oakland.
nine one as we go to the bottom of the ninth in favor of the A's. Romero Pena is going to lead things off. Patrick Schuster is your new pitcher. He's having a nice spring. I mean, this will be his fourth game. He's not giving up a hit two and two thirds inning with three strikeouts. 25 year old, no big league experience. So it'll be our first chance to take a look at him. Here's the sound by the Diamondbacks in 2009. Yeah, he's a little funky. This is his eighth year of organized baseball. So we're taking a look at Patrick Schuster, 6'2, 193 pounder, out of Holiday, Florida. Facing Pena here in the ninth. Giants need eight to tie and nine to go home. So Pena steps out. The old candlestick, some dust flew in my eye. That happened every at bat, every, every game. And always to Robbie Thompson. <laughs> it was. Or Richard really, yeah. One ball and one strike. Eliezer Zambrano is on deck. Or, as we like to say, number 85. Oh, number 85. On the ground. And they got him. As Diaz started to play around a little bit and it almost cost them. So here's Zambrano. Right, let's take a look at how close was it? Well, close enough to say that if this was the regular season, We'd be replaying that one. He was safe. So here's Zambrano up from the minor leagues. And he takes a strike. Harry Adrianza is on deck. It's 9 1 Oakland. With one out here in the ninth. Guide to right. Two down. There's Adrianza who's played the whole game. And that pitch just Mitch's wide to Adrianza. Singled in the third, bounced out in the fourth, bounced out in the seventh. Mitch, how much different he looks physically this year. Down the right field line, but it's slicing foul. We first saw Adrianza get to the big league camp, and he was just thin as a whisper. Not anymore. He's talking to him about it. how much different he looks now as he's basically matured, gotten older. And then Angel Pagan was laughing. I said, Angel, what, how, what did you weigh your first big league camp? He said, 175. So what do you weigh now? He says, 195. Yeah. That's about right. In tight. <laughs> well, it worked for some. Was about 174 and about 175 at the end. And I did not have Gregor Blanco's workout. <laughs> well, that's impressive. As you know. Old school, very old school. But you were of a generation where you kind of played your way into shape.
But you played every day. Didn't miss. And that's ball four. And we were talking about that spring training, about how how few guys were on the bench during the spring training game. You didn't have 40 guys suit up. And well, you were playing nine innings early in spring. If you got invited to spring training and you were not on the potential 25 man roster, you were really fortunate. It's a big deal. You have maybe tops 45, 46, 47 guys, or make that 32, 33 guys in camp. Yeah, if, you, if you were on the 40 man roster, you weren't guaranteed you were going to big league camp. That is a fact. Here's Gorky's Hernandez. And it's nothing in two. Nine one A's here in the ninth with Adrianza at first and two outs. And that's the ball game. So two hours and fifty eight minutes. And the A's beat the Giants. I think there's a couple of things. One, I thought Javier Lopez was terrific today. He was fantastic. Uh, Gregor Blanca was good to see him healthy and back. He had some uh, really nice at bats on base uh, two of the three times he's up with a walk and a knock. But really, I mean, I, I think the obvious one is the fact that Bumgarner made the start. I mean, everybody in the in the kingdom of the orange and black were very worried about his health coming into today's game. And uh, I mean, he didn't throw great mechanically, but he physically felt great, and that's what he said after the game. All right, final score: A's nine, Giants one. Join us on CSN Area Monday night, March 28th at 7, as the Giants will take on the D-backs. For more on today's game, tune in to Sportsnet Central, which is on tonight at 6. Coming up next, it's Giants Confidential. For Mike Gruco, for John Miller, for Amy G, I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Hope you enjoyed this one. We did. And thanks for joining us. And have a good night, everybody.